In the previous episode, we saw the basics of the composable architecture. Now it's time to move forward and build something more complex. In this video, we will explore a concept called composition and see how to achieve it by using three operators from TCA, scope, combine, and pullback. The counter we did last time is just one small part of the whole project to build an online store with TCA. The goal is to build an e-commerce app that receives a list of products from an API, make the user add items to a cart, and pay them once they are ready. Even though this app is quite small, it is way larger than the counter demo. It also got more actions now, closer to what will be an app in the real life. So let's apply the great strategy of divide and conquer. Today, we are going to create only the product cell that will be part of a list of products. To do that, we are going to use the concept of composition. If you don't know what is composition, in short words, it's a way to build a large project combining small pieces. Legos are a great example of composition, when a single piece is just a rectangle, but many of them can build great figures, for example, a train. For the online store app, we are going to start from the smallest piece, which is the counter demo, and moving forward until building a functional product cell. But first, let's go back to the counter demo and fix a few things. This state, action, environment, and reducer are not representing the whole app anymore, but just a small piece, which is add to cart button. In order to make this struct and enums meaningful to the context of add to cart, we have two options. One is renaming each one with a prefix associated to the corresponding domain. This is good, but personally, I don't like it because it leaves reducer function has a global function. Instead, let's create a wrapper struct add to cart domain that holds the state, action, environment, and reducer. Now with this approach, we don't need to rename anything and we just have to make a reducer a static function. However, this is now living inside of add to cart domain, which is in my opinion better for Swift guidelines. This is just a convention. Feel free to use any of the approaches for your project, but in this series, we will use the second approach. Finally, for this domain, let's rename the action cases just to be more related to what will happen in the view side, the tab plus button and the tab minus button. Now let's work on the view and create plus minus button. That will show the same UI from the previous episode. Now let's create add to cart button that also will use add to cart domain. But here, if counter is zero, we will show a normal button and for a higher value, show plus minus button. That's it for add to cart button. Let's move forward. Add to cart button is done. Now we need to build the product cell. And as we saw in the previous episode, this is a diagram that represents the flow of how TCA works. It turns out that all of this is being applied by add to cart domain. Now, what we want is to combine add to cart domain to build product domain, and then product list domain, and so on. Every domain in TCA will follow the diagram flow we saw in isolation. However, the children domains will be responsible only about their internal states. In other words, the flow of the information is just coming from one direction, from the root domain until reaching the deepest domain, which in this case is a two-card domain. This concept is called unidirectional flow, and TCA is a unidirectional flow architecture. With that said, Let's now work on the implementation of product domain. 
let's create the object that will represent the actual product and some samples that will be useful for testing. Now let's go to product domain and build the state. It will contain a product object that represents the actual data. Product domain will need action, environment and a reducer too, but let's set them blank for now. What will be the actions to add for product domain? Let's see the UI again. The only action for this product cell is the add to cart button. However, the functionality is already done in add to cart domain. How can we reduce it in product domain? Here is where we'll use composition. First, we need to create a dedicated property to hold add to cart state in product domain state. This is okay because add to cart is part of a product cell as a whole. Now, what will be the actions? Product domain doesn't need a brand new action, but reuse the actions from add to cart. We then need to represent all the set of actions in a single value. To do that, we can create a case add to cart and use an associated value to represent an action from our to cart domain. So now product domain can work with any add to cart action triggered. We don't need any dependency, so an empty environment is fine for now. Now let's jump to the reducer and create a switch with the actions from R to cart state. As we saw earlier, R to cart button has a default UI when count is zero and the minus and plus buttons for count greater than zero. In other words, plus button is working as expected. However, minus button should work different because we don't want negative numbers. Then when add to cart button is pressed, we have to verify that minimum number from add to cart state is at least zero. This looks good. Let's jump to product cell UI. As we saw in the previous episode, first we have to set up store property with state and action from product domain and to use with vStore to build or view there. I'm not going to explain the UI in detail, but if you are new in Swift UI, I will leave you a video for you in the description below. Now it's time to incorporate add to cart button. It requires a store parameter. The question is, what will be the correct store for it? As you saw earlier, we created a property in product domain state that represents add to cart state, and we added an action that represents all the actions from add to cart. We will provide that information to add to cart button, but how? We could create another store property in product cell to provide that value. However, this is not right because we will end with n numbers of stores later. The only store that we should care is the one from product domain. It turns out that DCA provides for store objects a function that will be helpful to provide the right store for add to cart button. Let's use store.scope. Store.scope will request a state and action has parameter, but as the name implies, instead of passing the whole store from product cell, we will limit the scope to just a piece of data contained in that store. And we already got that. We just need to use a keypad to reference add to cart state and sending the action case that represents all the actions from add to cart domain, which is add to cart. There you go. Add to cart button is set. What will happen if we run this on preview? Nothing is executed. Is there any bug in our logic? Not really, but we are missing something important. Let's go back to product domain and look at the reducer. Everything is set for product reducer, but it won't do anything regardless. The reason is because we are expecting actions from other domains like add to cart domain. However, the logic between these two is not plugged in yet. In order to compose a feature from multiple domains, we have to combine all the reducers 
and transform them into a single larger producer. In other words, each reducer is like a piece of Lego and joining two or more Legos, we can build a larger Lego piece to do something else. Then that larger piece can become an even larger one if we combine them with other more complex reducers and so on. Now the question is how to do that? Every TCA reducer comes with a built-in function called combine that like the name suggests, will combine multiple reducers and create a single and more complex reducer. Now, what is the other reducer we need to combine? Of course, it's a to car domain dot reducer. However, we cannot combine it directly. We need to transform it into something that product domain can manage. For that, TCA provides a function called pullback. In simple words, pullback will transform a child domain into one compatible with the parent domain. In this case, parent domain is product domain because it's holding add to car state and add to car actions. Same like we did for scope, let's use a keypad to reference add to car state and a case pad to reference what is the case holding the action and provide the environment from add to car. You might wonder what is a case pad? Case pad is the equivalent of a keypad, but for the nums. This is not native from Swift. It was built in by TCA creators and provided in the composable architecture library. I will leave you more information in the description if you want to know more. One more thing you need to know. All the children reducers must go before the parent reducer. This will guarantee that all the children reducers will mutate their state and leave the parent until the end to detect when a child action is executed. Okay, it's finally time to test again. Finally, this is working as expected. That will be it for now. In the next one, we will see how to integrate this domain in a list. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And remember, my name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.